We have all seen it. It's one of the most distinctive sights in all of photography, the long white lens, emblazoned with a crimson ring around the barrel, a telephoto juggernaut endowed with the power to perform under the most challenging of circumstances. Its pristine glass elements focus light, deliver plush, surreal images, and crush perfect sharpness every single time. This is the Canon 70-200 f2.8 L series lens. Here we have an optic that will open your creative horizons to an infinite number of possibilities. And when you set your sights on the portrait world, there is absolutely no limit to what you can accomplish. This is the Canon 70-200 f2.8 L-series lens. Now, at the risk of sending all of our prime lens fanatics into a tidal wave of furious rage, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. This is the greatest portrait lens of all time. So, let's get into it. World's greatest portrait lens. That is certainly a bold statement, one for which I will no doubt receive an endless mountain of criticism. No one can deny that the Canon 70-200mm f2.8 L stands atop a colossal podium in the Photography Hall of Fame. But is this really the greatest portrait lens of all time? Many challengers will contest this claim, and we will certainly talk about them. But in the end, who will reign supreme? And which lens will you choose for your next portrait session? Now, for the purpose of this episode, we will be discussing the 70-200mm f2.8 L designed for DSLR cameras. We are not talking about the RF lenses which fit onto the new Canon mirrorless cameras. We'll save that piece of futuristic alien technology for another review. For now, we're going back in time to the EF lens. There are in fact two versions of this lens. It comes in a small, modest f4 version, which is adorable. And it comes in the prodigious, downright girthy f2.8 version. The sizable f2.8 is what I have used for the majority of my career. And this is where we will focus our efforts. As always, it makes sense to start off by talking price. If you have ever had your eye on one of these long white cylinders, you would probably swear that it was filled with gold rather than glass. Coming in at a staggering $2,000, this is the kind of gear that can cause serious disruptions to your annual cash flow. Do you spend the money on this legendary tube of polished glass? Or do you simply pack up your existing camera and take a soul-searching road trip across America? Either option probably costs about the same. In any regard, if you are one of those photographers who has been on the verge of pulling the trigger, draining the bank account, and going all in on the great white whale, this review should hopefully give you that last ounce of courage to tap into the money train and bring this lens home once and for all. All right, so is the Canon 70-200mm f2.8 L series lens good for portraits? Yes, of course it is. I shoot 95% of all of my portraits on this lens, and I can assure you it's absolutely phenomenal. It performs beautifully throughout the entire range. You can pull back to 70 millimeters and incorporate a whole bunch of the outside environment, and you can also zoom into 135 millimeters or even 200 millimeters to get a nice tight headshot with that beautiful, shallow, creamy depth of field. So this lens literally does it all. So the thing I like best about this lens is that you can stand in one place. You never have to move your feet. You stay the exact same distance between yourself and your subject, and you can literally get almost an infinite number of different portraits without ever moving. So it's one of those minimal effort lenses, work smarter, not harder. Now I know a lot of the prime lens people are fond of saying if you want a different composition, you zoom with your feet, and that's good, that's great. But this lens actually takes a lot of the legwork out of zooming. You can make most of your compositional decisions while you stand in one place. And that kind of takes a lot of the hustle and bustle out of the photography situation. It allows you to keep a more calm demeanor and it allows you to accomplish more with less. 
can you get that shallow depth of field with this lens, that coveted out of focus background that photographers strive so much to get, especially when they're making portraits? The answer is yes, absolutely. This lens was born to do that. At 200 millimeters f2.8, it's gonna give you a very, very contracted depth of field, which allows you to create very dreamy, surrealistic portraits. So the thing you wanna learn about this is that the human eye is basically the equivalent of a 50 millimeter lens. Our eyesight is engineered so that we see everything in focus all the time. That's how human beings perceive reality. We have this infinite focus. Now, the reason that you get such a special feeling when you see a photograph with a shallow depth of field is that that's fantasy. That's not how the human eye sees. And yet the telephoto lens allows you to engineer that situation with light and optics, and it just makes for an absolutely beautiful portrait. It allows you to blur out the background, eliminate all the distractions, and create a single focus on your subject so that your subject does not have to visually compete with all the other stuff that's happening out there in the world. Does the 70 to 200 have image stabilization? Yes, it does. There's a little switch on the side of the barrel that allows you to turn the image stabilizer on and off. Uh, I personally use that all the time when I'm hand holding. It definitely allows you to pick up maybe a stop, maybe even a stop and a half of sort of extra light as you're holding your image steady. And it's very, very important, especially at longer focal lengths. When you zoom out to a very long focal length, that image can get very shaky because you're focusing on something that's very far away and the focal plane is very small. So it tends to get every tiny little movement that you make back here is amplified farther away at the end of that telephoto range where your subject is standing. So image stabilization is absolutely be critical for a long lens like this. And this lens delivers image stabilization beautifully. It's really, really wonderful. I mean, you can literally click the button, actuate the image stabilizer, and you can see your image stop shaking. It just freezes into this perfect freeze frame. It's really, really cool. So image stabilization, yes, 100%. And I would say critical for a telephoto portrait lens. All right, so let's talk build quality. Is this a quality lens? And to that, I would say yes, absolutely. This is the original EF design, and the thing that makes this lens unique is that all of the elements are contained within the lens. So no matter where you zoom or focus, all of the elements move within the barrel. So there's no way that this thing can suck in dust or sand or dirt or any of the elements that get into a lens. A lot of modern lenses are much smaller, but they kind of sacrifice size for that telescoping factor. And when you have a lens that does this, it actually invites lots of dust and elements that can get sucked right in there. And as you probably know, sand, dust, dirt, they are the worst enemy of camera equipment. You want your equipment to kind of stay nice and pristine and clean. And this lens enables you to work in almost any environment and never really have the environment get into the lens. Unless you're changing out the lens for something else, there's really no way that anything could get inside this lens because again it's all self-contained within the barrel i find that to be a really really excellent characteristic now you do sacrifice size it is a big lens but in my opinion that's actually okay because if you're especially if you're working with clients and you show up with a big lens like that that's probably going to inspire confidence in them that you are a professional and that you know what you're doing i also like a larger lens just for the sheer weight I tend to prefer a bit of a heavier setup. It tends to be a little bit more stable in my hands that way. Now I know that this can get pretty heavy after a long day of shooting, but that's just kind of the consequence of using heavy duty equipment that's very heavily built with lots of quality. The quality is not gonna let you down, but you might wanna hit the gym just a little bit to beef up in order to heft this baby around on a long shoot. All right, so how does the 70 to 200 stack up against one of the other portrait juggernauts such as the 85 millimeter prime? Now, I know that a lot of photographers love their prime lenses, and I know that the 85 millimeter is probably gonna be heralded as the all-time heavyweight king of shooting portraits. And to that, I would say I agree. That is a phenomenal lens. Definitely a really amazing lens. Now, if you zoom this lens out to 85 millimeters, is it going to be as sharp as that 85 millimeter prime? I would say probably not as sharp. However, this lens is razor sharp and I've never had a problem with sharpness shooting any type of portrait with this lens. I don't really know why you would need to go sharper than this. The 85 probably is a little bit sharper because it was purpose built to be super razor sharp for shooting portraits. But I mean, again, 
I can't imagine needing any more sharpness out of a lens. This does such a phenomenal job. Furthermore, you have to look at things from a practical standpoint. If you could only buy one portrait lens for the rest of your life, this would definitely be it because this lens brings a huge amount of variety to your photography capabilities. You can take it on landscape shoots, you can take it to a wedding, you can take it to shoot sports. It gobbles up light in almost every situation. Now, would you take an 85 millimeter to any of those aforementioned events, you probably wouldn't take an 85 to shoot landscapes. You could take it to shoot weddings, but it definitely wouldn't be your primary lens. It would probably be in the bag most of the day. And I very seriously doubt you would take it to shoot sports, maybe certain sports that are close up, boxing, MMA, possibly. But this lens will do all of that variety with absolutely no problem. Whereas the 85, it tends to be, I hate to say it, a little bit more of a one trick pony. It was designed to do one thing very, very well. And it does that one thing very well, but so too does this lens, plus a million other things. So in my book, variety is gonna rule over a tiny little bit of extra quality that you get out of a purpose-built prime lens. So I don't mean to paint myself into a corner where I'm ripping on prime lenses. The 85 millimeter is an absolutely spectacular lens. And if you have the ability to pick that lens up, you should definitely do so because it is a phenomenal, piece of glass. I would, however, recommend that you get your 85 millimeter after you have bought your 70 to 200. 70 to 200 is gonna give you a huge variety of capabilities across a wide spectrum of photography, whereas the 85 millimeter is a lot more specialized. And you can get into your specialized capability gear after you've already established your workhorse gear that is gonna provide you that huge amount of variety across a number of photographic spectrums. Is the 70 to 200 good for shooting video? To that end, I would say, yes, absolutely. This is a cinematic lens that allows you to get amazing telephoto shots at a contracted depth of field that produce movie quality shots. You could literally shoot a box office movie with this lens, and I'm sure that actually has been done in some certain cases out there. I love shooting video with this lens because it allows you to really isolate your subject and create that beautiful, creamy, out of focus backdrop. So it is in fact a very sophisticated and useful piece of filmmaking technology in addition to its prowess as a photography lens. So video, 100%, absolutely. So I guess we should probably talk autofocus. I would say that the autofocus acquisition on this lens is very, very quick, it's very snappy, and it is very, very accurate. I tend to use single point autofocus. I don't use any kind of special tracking. Uh, I use older camera systems that do not have eye autofocus. Uh, I typically put my focus point right down the middle. I'll get critical sharpness on that focus point, and then I'll move the camera over just a little bit to kind of get the composition that I'm looking for. And that's always been a really, really good formula for getting critical focus. So everything about the focusing system in this lens is, is very, very snappy. You can use it to shoot sports, you can use it for autofocus tracking, you can use it for single point autofocus, and it actually has very, very snappy focus acquisition. So I will take a minute to say that this is my absolute favorite lens to shoot with. I just love holding it. I love shooting with it. I love the size. I love the dimensions. I love everything about it. It enables you to create really, really beautiful cinematic artwork. Now, is it the most important lens for photography? For that, I would say probably the 24 to 70 is going to give you the most variety across the most number of photography genres from landscape to portrait to wedding to sports to street photography to product photography. This is gonna be able to give you a huge amount of variety. So if you could only have one lens for the rest of your life, this would definitely be the one to choose. It gives you an enormous amount of variety across a huge spectrum of photographic genres. This, on the other hand, is a little bit more specialized. The telephoto lens is a little bit more for the portrait world, for the sports world, uh, and it's not gonna give you the variety that something like a 24 to 70 is gonna give you. So probably most important lens, 24 to 70, favorite lens of all time, 70 to 200. It's just a joy to shoot with. So most important, favorite to use. Completely different topics there, but we can definitely get into that in another video. Make sure you check out our 24 to 70 review. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so question of the hour, should you buy the 70 to 200 f2.8 L series lens? in 2023. And to that, I would say it depends. It depends on what your equipment situation currently is. If you have already jumped, made the leap over to mirrorless and you're shooting with something like a Canon R5 or an R6, I would say get the R-Type 70-200. to Don't go backwards in time 
and get this lens to try to save a couple of bucks. You're gonna get an enormous amount of performance out of the new R-Type lens. Those things are absolutely incredible. It's like they were made by aliens. I don't know how Canon is able to squeeze that much sharpness, performance, and focus acquisition out of those lenses, but they do, and they work very, very admirably on the new mirrorless cameras. Now, if you're like me and you're still holding on to your old DSLR dinosaurs like the 5DSR, this lens is a very wise investment. I get an enormous amount of enjoyment and quality out of this lens. It has never, ever let me down. So depending on your situation, if you've already made the leap to mirrorless, go with the new R-Type lens. If you're still in the DSLR world like I am, this is one of the most excellent game-changing investments that you can possibly make. Furthermore, if you do buy this lens, hook it up to your DSLR camera and shoot with it for a year or two, and then you decide to eventually upgrade to the mirrorless, you can just get a simple adapter and hook this onto your new mirrorless camera. Now, will it work as great as the R-Type lenses? Not as great, but it's still very adequate. It has excellent focus acquisition and it has excellent quality. I think it even picks up an extra stop of light due to that little adapter, which is pretty cool. So if you are looking to invest in a new portrait lens that will never let you down, that will give you a huge amount of variety and an absolute joy to shoot, the 70 to 200 original EF series lens will never let you down. I have had such a good time with this lens over my career. It allows you to create such beautiful, crisp artwork that you just can't achieve with something in the shorter focal range. So this is definitely a beautiful workhorse of a lens. It delivers delivers enormous quality, enormous sharpness, and it allows your artwork to really flourish in the fantasy land with that beautiful, shallow, contracted depth of field. So if you are running an old dinosaur like me, I would say give this old dinosaur some new life with a brand new 70 to 200 millimeter lens. You will not be disappointed. All right, friends, as always, thank you so much for joining us. Now, what is your favorite portrait lens? I would love to hear your story, so be sure to leave us a comment down below. Furthermore, if you are interested in elevating your photography to the next level, zip on over to our website, premiumlightacademy.com, and check out some of our tutorials. Last but not least, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. We have a lot of cool new stuff coming up, and I don't want you to miss out. So we'll see you in the next lesson. Oh.